Hello, everybody. Welcome to First Good Shepherd Lutheran in downtown beautiful Las Vegas. We're so glad that you're worshiping with us. Many here in person for the first time. Yay, God. Yay, people of FGS. And we know that some of you are worshiping with us online, too. We hope this service is a blessing to you on this, the third Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, we are going to be using divine service setting, too. So if you have your Lutheran hymn books at home, you can turn to page 167 and follow the Confession and Absolution. We'll be doing the Kyrie, basically a regular worship service format. We pray that this service is a blessing to you. Uh, the psalmist said in Psalm 122, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. May this service be a blessing to all of you as you hear his word. We begin on page 167, and with the PowerPoint. Actually, we're going to sing the opening hymn first, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. See, Deacon Steve? Already messed up. Let's sing our opening hymn, Praise the Lord. We remember that we are God's baptized children in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing praises to your name, O Most High. The righteous flourish like the palm tree. And grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green. To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing praises to your name, O Most High. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed, Blessed Lord. Lord. You, you have, have caused, caused all holy, holy scriptures, scriptures to be written for our learning. Help, Help us to hear them, read, mark, learn, and, and inwardly take them, so that we will always hold on to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> the Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after Pentecost comes from Exodus chapter 19, verses 2 through 8. After they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai. 
and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt, and how I carried you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words of the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together, We will do everything the Lord has said. So Moses brought their answer back to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading comes from Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 15. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sinned, to be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given. But sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who is a pattern of the one to come. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth and 10th chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who was called Peter and his brother, Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any other town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Well, a lot has been going on since we last met, right? In our city, in our state, and also in our world. So I thought I'd share with you pretty much one Bible verse from our epistle reading from the fantastic book of Romans. It's Romans chapter 5, verse 8. One verse for us to consider today. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Today I want to lift up those two words, but God, which upon surface examination make no sense at all, but we pray that the Holy Spirit today will breathe life on them. The picture of lost humanity is so real. Uh, pain, suffering, injustice, rioting, unholy conversation, giving in to the lust of the flesh. By nature, we're all children of disobedience. Amen? Amen. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, All have sinned, not some have sinned, but all. That's the picture painted by the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 1. And the pain is terribly pronounced. Helplessness and hopelessness. Despair all around. The Apostle says that sin and despair is everywhere. And divine wrath is sure to come. And then... Out of the tomb of despair, seemingly from nowhere, words spring forth that bring this change to this whole ugly mess. But God. That's right. Say them with me. But God. Those two words. You see, because of our sins, we were citizens for hell, unqualified for help, no hope for tomorrow, hopelessly dead. But God. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I'm so glad that we have a merciful God. How about you? Not only is he a merciful God, but the Apostle Paul says he's rich in mercy. God didn't just say say that he loved us. I mean, he demonstrated it with action. Don't know about you, but I've seen a lot of demonstrations going on lately. He demonstrated it on the cross. It's the greatest demonstration of forgiveness, love, and mercy ever displayed. Christ died for us for our sins. What a wonderful reversal. We were ruined, rushing to damnation. We were headed for hell. We were captured and controlled by the terrible three, the devil, the world, and our flesh. That was our plight. But God... The reason you see we have to be born again is because we come here dead. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, we come into this world spiritually dead in our trespasses and sins. And no social program dreamed up by man can do away with the sin problem. Amen? Now the experts, they don't like to use the word sin. Uh, They talk about crime and and devious behavior and and social maladjustment and anti-social behavior and a host of other isms. They don't like sin talk. For you see, when they call it for what it really is, it forces us to deal with the God factor. But whatever tag you put on it, it's still sin. For the sin problem is everywhere. It's in the city and the suburbs. It's in the suites and it's in the streets. It's in my house, your house, and the White House. It's in the clubhouse, the crack house, the police house, the BLM house, the LBGTQ house, the media house, the academia house, and it's also in the church house. 
Without the but God reality in our lives, we journey under the devil's direction. We are subject to Satan's attack. But God, you see, is a, is a means of changing of direction and changing of destination and changing of our living and behaving. But God, you see, allows for the, the switching of tracks, the moving from sin to salvation, from dead and trespasses of sin to alive in Jesus Christ. Amen? From being mean to being kind. From unforgiveness to forgiveness. From frowns to smiles. From racism to gracism. The big three, the devil, the world, and our flesh, they're against this switching. The world does not like saved sinners. The world does not like people who are ethical, people who believe in Jesus Christ, people who love God, and, and people who love their neighbor. The but God reality, it refuses to be silent. I suppose it has to do with the reality of a great change, of a, of a turning around. It has to do with people who can't help but talk how they've persevered in this life because of what the Lord Jesus has done for them. For you see, it's the language that declares that when nothing else could help, the forgiveness and love of God lifted me up. Paul would tell you that he too was down, but lifted up. He was headed down the road to destruction, the road to Damascus. He was blind in sin, but God allowed him to see and began to follow Jesus. The Bible is a book complete with but God testimonies. Noah will tell you that the whole earth was judged and condemned, but God Rich in his mercy spared me and my family. Abraham will tell you I left home not knowing where I was bound, but God, he led and directed me. Moses will testify, I did know how I was going to bring that large, great crowd out of Egypt, but God, he parted the waters. Daniel speaks up, I was thrown into a den of lions, but God, he delivered me. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego declared together, they cast us in a fiery furnace, but God, he rescued us three. I hear Ezekiel testifying, I was led into a valley of dry bones where I was surrounded by death, but God was able to breathe life into those old bones. Blind Bartimaeus wants to talk. I sat by the roadside one day. They told me to be quiet, but God, he healed me. Lazarus says, I died. I was buried in Bethany in the fourth day of my decay, but God, he called me by my name, and I came to life. Even the Savior Jesus will tell you, I willingly submitted my life to the Roman authorities. They crucified me on Friday, and I was buried in Joseph's new tomb. They all thought that I was finished, but God... He raised me from the dead on the third day and broke the chains of sin, death, and hell for people from all nations. Every follower, every believer in Jesus has a but God testimony. And some of us have several. I was sick and they said I wouldn't get well. But God... I was drowning in depression, but God. I was strung out on alcohol and drugs, but God. I was filled with rage and anger, but God. I was swimming in guilt and shame, but God. I was living in sexual immorality, but God. I have known heartaches and heartbreaks and grief, but God. We can all sign our name under Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
I tell you, it's the language of intervention. He has a way of stepping in just when we need him most. It's the language of reversal. He majors in turning things around. Some of you have heard me tell the story about a man named George Thomas. He was a pastor in a small New England town. And one Sunday morning, he came to church carrying a, a rusty old beat-up birdcage. And he set it up on the pulpit. Eyebrows were raised, and as if in response, Pastor Thomas began to speak. I was walking through town yesterday, and when I saw a young boy coming towards me, and he was swinging this bird cage. On the bottom of the cage were three little wild birds shivering with cold and fright. I stopped the lad and asked, What you got there, son? Ah, just some old birds, came the reply. What are you going to do with them? I asked. Well, I'm going to take them home and have some fun with them, he answered. I'm going to tease them and pull out their feathers, and I'm going to make them fight. I'm going to have me a real good time. But you'll get tired of those birds sooner or later. Then what will you do? Oh, I got some cats, said the little boy. They like birds. I'll take them to them. The pastor was silent for a moment. How much do you want for them birds, son? Huh? Well, you don't want them birds, mister. They're just plain old field birds. They don't sing. I mean, they ain't even pretty. How much? He asked again. The boy sized up the pastor as if he were crazy and said, $20. The pastor reached into his pocket. He pulled out a $20 bill and he gave it to the boy. And the kid took off. The pastor picked up the cage and gently carried it to the end of the alley uh, where there was a, a tree and a grassy spot. And setting the cage door, the cage down, he, he opened up the door and by softly tapping the bars, persuaded the birds out setting them free. Well, that explained the empty birdcage on the pulpit. And then the pastor began to tell this story. One day, Satan and Jesus were having themselves a conversation. Satan had just come from the Garden of Eden and he was gloating and he was boasting, yes sir, I just caught the whole world full of people down there, set me a trap, used some bait, I knew they couldn't resist. Got them all. What are you going to do with them? Jesus asked. Satan replied, Oh, I'm going to have me some fun. I'm going to teach them how to marry and divorce each other, how to hate and abuse each other, how to invent guns and bombs and kill each other. I'm going to teach them how to get addicted to all kinds of destructive, destructive stuff. I'm really going to have a good time. And what will you do when you get done with them? Jesus asked. Oh, I'll kill them. Satan glared proudly. How much you want for them? Jesus asked. Oh, you don't want those people. Man, they ain't no good. Doesn't matter what their background is. They'll hate you. They'll take you. They'll spit on you. They'll curse you. And then they'll kill you. You don't want those people. How much? He asked again. Satan looked at Jesus and said, all your blood, your tears, and your life. Jesus said, done. And then he paid the price. The pastor picked up the cage. He opened the door. And he walked away from the pulpit. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us.
And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We join together in the words of the Nicene Creed. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers of the church. The response to the petition is, Lord, have mercy. Lord, we pray for the church and her witness of hope to the world, that in every city, village, and home across the globe, the voice of the Lord may be heard by the faithful preaching of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who live under the flag of our nation, for those who govern in this country, and for the causes of peace and justice, that we may all be given grace and freedom to serve the Lord honorably and in accord with his word, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, that the Lord would grant them healing, for the wounded in spirit, that the Lord would make them whole. And for the grieving, that the Lord would comfort them. And Lord, today we especially lift up Wayne Dibos, that the new therapy will bring healing. Lord, we lift up the family and friends of Mary Chauncey, whose brother Richard passed away last week. We lift up the family and friends of Lillian Richard, who passed away this week. We pray for the family of Carol White as she's now receiving hospice care at home. And Lord, we lift up all of the Las Vegas Metro Police and all police personnel around the country in this time of unrest. Lord, protect them as they protect us. And Lord, we lift up those that we name silently in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O blessed Lord, through Moses you called a people to yourself, and from them you delivered up your own Son to be our Savior. By his sufferings and death, he has redeemed us sinners from our sins, and by his resurrection, he has released us from the fear of death. Help us to live as your own people, doing the good works for which we were created, and praying with confidence the petitions and supplications of our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
We want to thank you for your continued offerings and donations to carry out the ministry, especially during the COVID time when we were able to assemble and worship together uh, by the grace of God. And because of your contributions, we're able to hang in there for the most part and make ends meet. Really do appreciate your gifts. Let's say together the Leviticus verse. Every tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. We continue with the service of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Please rise. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. As we sing the Agnes Day, Lamb of God, you may be seated. You've received the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. May these gifts keep you believing in Jesus in the one true faith until life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering us here safely today where we could hear your word and be inspired by your saving message, which assures us of your love despite our sin and of your forgiveness. May these spiritual vitamins, along with Holy Communion, can continue to strengthen and encourage us so that we can persevere, always believe in your Son, Jesus, that we can love you and love our neighbor, all the while knowing that you love us now and until eternity. Thank you for those very needful reminders. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. So glad that you were able to be here in person. Those of you who are here, yay God, yay for your presence. Hope you were blessed in the service today. And those of you who are watching on TV, hope you were blessed as well. Sure was good to have people in church again today. Boy, Dick and it Steve. really <laughs> felt 
almost normal. <laughs> Finally, right, almost normal. Little difference with every other pew, social distancing here and there. Yeah, sure and the, the muffled voices with the singing with the masks on, but that's okay. That's, that's okay. right, exactly. It was great to hear God's people in worship again. Hey, wanted to give you a quick uh, announcement update on Mountain View Christian School. We're getting very close to signing the lease. They had a very successful open house last Thursday. Yeah, they're... Man, their parents are really impressed with our facilities, both the lower school and the upper school. I think uh, Ray, their executive director, said they could have 25 to 30 seniors this year. Just seniors. Yeah, exactly. So um, I think right now they're expecting well over 100 kids right now, and we're only in the beginning of the summer months, so we could have a lot of families and kids on our campus. So. Uh, thanks be to God, right? Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. By the way, the meeting at uh, City Hall went well last Thursday. City planning commissioners endorsed the uh, special use permit so that we could have secondary high school, the parking variants for parking too. The city council will rubber stamp it on July 22nd, so we're very confident of that, that everything yeah, will keep moving forward. Yeah, we could forward. still use some prayers for that. For sure, exactly. <laughs> so it looks like it's coming together for us. Video Technology Fund, get this. We have reached our goal of 20,000. Yay, God. And yay, people of FGS, I think our 21,000 uh, is our total right now. So thanks for everyone who responded. I kind of like to say, it, had we tried to do this before COVID, I don't know if there would have been such a response. But um, now that... A little longer. I think so. But I think we see the value of being able to provide services for people online, not only for our folks, but really anybody who wants to view all over the world. It's an excellent tool to get us into 2020 and beyond and to proclaim the saving message of Jesus Christ, Amen. right? That God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for everybody. The crosses for loss of storage. Remember, I've been talking to you about that in one of the classrooms up there. We have about 75 crosses. Greg Janis died. He was the guy who started all this when there's, you know, unfortunately when there's shootings, he's provided all the crosses. He teamed up with Lutheran Church Charities. You know, our comfort dog Lois is a part of LC, LCC. Well, LCC partnered with Greg, actually took over his ministry so that when unfortunately these events happen all over the world, there would be crosses. Well, we found storage. Redeemer Lutheran on Pecos has some empty classrooms. Yeah. Yeah, and, so, and I, uh, I twisted Pastor Steve Kluver's arm uh, <laughs> quite heavily, okay. and uh, he got it done for us. So we'll be getting those over Man, how far up did you get it? A long way. Okay, just, long way. <laughs> I'll bet. So way to go, Redeemer, for helping us out. It's a team ministry among LCMS churches, so that's great they're able to do that. The new portals of prayer, you can find those in the back of the church. So if you haven't picked yours up for the months of July through September, they are available for you or for someone else that you want to put the Word of God into the hands of so that they can be blessed. And if anybody would like to pray, uh, I'll be in this area as long as people are around. Social distancing, of course. If you want to pray, praise or give thanks, please let me know and I'll be glad to pray for you this evening. And, and I really want to say thank you to everyone here tonight mm -hmm. for following the directions of the elders, for not trying to get too close and for not sitting in a pew that you normally would sit <laughs> that may have had tape across it. I really, really appreciate that. Thank and, you. And thank you to Deacon Steve because he did most of the work in the sanctuary. He's the detail guy, so I really appreciate him. And all of our elders who pitched in as ushers tonight yeah. and who are pulling double duty tomorrow so that people can feel safe and comfortable and secure as they worship the triune God. And with that, we say, God bless, God be with, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be, be to God. God. See you next time, everybody.